Hello and welcome back to Hoosier History Legends and Heroes. Today we will introduce you to Marine Mason Edson and the Lake Denmark Explosion. Mason D. Wilson Edson was born on July 22, 1904 to Charles and Cora Edson. Charles and Cora were living in Kentucky when Mason was born, but later they moved to Evansville, Indiana. When Mason was 13, he lost his mother, Cora, to tuberculosis. Mason enlisted with the Marines at the age of 16 on November 12, 1920, for a two-year enlistment. On January 1, 1921, he was transferred to the music detachment and became a trumpeter. He was a trumpeter for the rest of his time and was honorably discharged at Quantico, Virginia on November 11, 1922. And it was noted that he was of excellent character. On October 29, 1924, he re-enlisted for three years this time and was able to continue as a trumpeter. On July 10, 1926, just 12 days before Mason's 22nd birthday, he was in New Jersey. He was at the Lake Denmark Naval Ammunition Storage Depot and the Picatinny Arsenal. Around 5.15 that evening, a bolt of lightning struck the U.S. Naval Powder Depot, detonating a storehouse which stored 670,000 pounds of high explosives. The lightning caused three major explosions within 30 minutes. This ended up being one of the worst catastrophes in U.S. history. The blast destroyed nearly 200 buildings in a half mile radius, causing $47 million in damages. And remember, this was in 1926. The devastation ended up with 21 deaths and dozens of injuries. The blast was so powerful that people reported finding debris almost 22 miles away. The military evacuated civilians in neighboring towns. Bombs were still going off for the next three days. There was a full congressional investigation into the explosion, and it was found that the lightning strike was the cause. Also, the Department of Defense Safety Board was founded. This board was formed to maintain safety with the storage of military ammunition, with special attention to areas with homes and businesses close by. From an article that was published in newspapers on the 14th of July, 1926, Private Kasmer Kensick, who survived the blast, tells his account from his hospital bed of what happened to Mason Edson plus two other of his friends. Kensick tells that they were standing talking when the fire alarm sounded. A Lieutenant Schrader told the Marines, who were together, to climb in his auto to help put out the fire. Kensick believes about a dozen men climbed in. On the way to the fire, they passed a hose reel. He tells that four of them jumped out to run to the reel. Mason was one of these four. The four had just gotten the reel started when he heard an awful roar. He tells how he was blinded and left deaf by the roar. He also tells how it was a great red flash and then he knew nothing. His three buddies were killed before his eyes. Mason was one of the three buddies of Private Kensick who were killed in the blast. Mason's body was so severely damaged by shrapnel and burns that the only way he could be identified was by a Marine fingerprint expert. His body was sent home to Evansville, Indiana to his father Charles on July 15th. Mason was posthumously awarded the Navy Cross for his heroism. The medal and citation were given to his father on October 21st, 1926. The citation says, the President of the United States of America takes pride in presenting this Navy Cross posthumously to trumpeter Mason D. Edson, United States Marine Corps, for extraordinary heroism and fearless devotion to duty 
on the occasion of the explosions from lightning at the Naval Ammunition Depot, Lake Denmark, New Jersey, on 10 July 1926. Although he fully realized the imminence of great peril, Trumpeter Edson continued at his post of duty in an endeavor to check the spread of the disaster, thereby losing his life. I talked to a nephew of Mason's who was not alive at the time of his death, but he had memories of what his grandfather, and now this is Mason's father, had told him. Mason's body was returned to Evansville on a train. There was a Marine guard at his casket at all times. Mason's body was never left alone. When his body arrived back in Evansville, his father asked the Marine guard if he could open the casket so that he could have one last look at his son, but the Marine guard told him no. I'm sure it was for the best. It would be better to remember him as he was. The Marine guard stayed with Mason until he was buried. His nephew also remembers his grandfather showing him Nason's Navy Cross and how proud his grandfather was of him. Mason is buried in Evansville at the Alexander Memorial Park Cemetery. When his father died in 1965, he was buried in the family plot with him. Nearly 40 years later, father and son were reunited. Thank you for joining us for the telling of Marine Trumpeter Mason Edson and the Lake Denmark explosion. We hope you enjoyed the telling of Mason's story. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. Until next time.